Chris Graham here and Nick Watts. We're looking into the brand new Premier League season here on We Love Betting. And right now we're looking at the top four. Who's going to finish in those sacred four positions to gain qualification for next season's Champions League? Spurs did it last year, but of course didn't make it into the, into the league competition because of Chelsea winning the Champions League. Shocker Rooney if you're a Spurs fan, that's for sure. Man City, Man United, long odds on. Uh, to finish in the top four. Chelsea, best pitch, 1 3, Arsenal, 8 to 13. And we've got Spurs at 2s, Liverpool, 5 to 2, and Newcastle and Everton at, at big prices. Nick, um, is the bet, first thing is, is the betting order right in terms of City, United, Chelsea, and Arsenal for that top four? Those four teams? Yeah, I think so. I think they are uh, about right. You know, um, Chelsea obviously had a bizarre season last year, utterly uh, mm. strange, and, and whether that was down to AVB or, or or Abramovich trying to force change too quickly, uh, I don't know. But you'd certainly expect them to be back on track this year. The the additions they've made, they've spent an awful lot of money. If they don't finish in the top four this year, it would be an absolute disaster because surely they can't ride their luck to the Champions League again. Um, yeah, for me, there's only four teams to look at at this market uh, in terms of uh, that could do it and that are any sort of value, I guess. Uh, and that's Arsenal, obviously, at the bottom end of, of those top four um, Spurs and Liverpool are, I guess, the most likely to, to challenge them, and, and then Newcastle, who were fantastic last year. They, were, you know, they were involved right to the end, and you, you've got to give them credit for that. Um, my only thing about them, and I'm sure a lot of people have raised this point, is the depth of the squad. Yeah. There's another African Nations this year, and, and of course Senegal uh, have got two of their, their strikers. Um, Senegal not guaranteed to be going yet. Of course, they, they've got a tough game against the Ivory Coast to, to decide who goes to African Nations. So that. That could still work out well for Newcastle, um, but also Tioto as well. So, um, you know, Newcastle for me, they're a huge price, but at the same time you're relying on not having any injuries and those players not going to the African nations and being able to maintain that, that consistency and, and that puts me off a little bit. Um, Liverpool are just too short, really. yeah. as simple as that. We talked about this in the, uh, in the title winning uh, market uh, video and... I just feel like they're too short in this, this market as well. Um, yes, I think they'll be better this year. We've talked about the fact it's a long-term project. Uh, he's brought in Joe Allen. Uh, he's battling out to try and get Nuri Shaheen and um, uh, obviously Barini up front as well. But I uh, just feel like they're lacking a little bit there, really. It'd be a real surprise for me if they made it into the top yeah, four. Just very quickly, Nick, uh, I heard you on Twitter yesterday uh, bemoaning the fee for Stephen Fletcher, saying it was too, just too much. Uh, Joe Allen, 50 million, that's, that surprised a lot of people as yeah, well. Do you yeah. think that's equally as, as horrific a price? He's, uh, he's a bit younger, isn't he? And I think that people have got high hopes for him. I can't say I know enough about him, mm. but again, Liverpool seems to be paying the prices for the players. What the players can become. This is what they did yeah, with Carroll. Yeah. He could have become a thirty-five million pound striker. It yeah. seems a ridiculous notion now, doesn't it? Yeah. But I, I really feel like even if he he went somewhere else, he could still become that striker. But they're, they're paying finished article prices for players that are not the finished yeah. article. Uh, so that was obviously a bit of a, an eyebrow raiser. Um, yeah, coming back to the top four market, um, Tottenham are in a very similar position to last year. I uh, I was very much opposed to them getting in the top four last year. Didn't see it happening at all. They had the same problem with Modric and, and what have you. Didn't have really the strikers to do it. Uh, it's all very familiar, I have to say. That what I will say is they had a fantastic deadline day uh, last year. Uh, Scott Parker obviously came in, Adebayo was snapped up yeah. and Modric ended up staying and it, and it translated into what was a great season, albeit with a disappointing end to it. Um, Harry Redknapp, he may not be a wheeler dealer Chris, but he was very good on deadline day, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Will AVB be as good? We'll, we'll soon find out. Uh, I wouldn't like to rule them out at this stage just because they will be active. As soon as that Modric sale goes through, they are going to go and mm -hmm. uh, fire off some money and, and bring in some players. and. And while there's a negative feeling about them now, um, I, I think they can be bigger further down the line. Arsenal's prices vary uh, a lot for me. Uh, you can get 8 to 13 in places, but they're also 4 to 9 in other places. So um, some bookies think they're absolutely nailed on, others not entirely convinced. I said it in the, the outright winner video, um, depends so much on these players settling in. And, and on the surface, they look like great additions. Um, you know, Kazula, the Fabregas replacement. Uh, Podolski and, uh, and Giroud taking the goal scoring burden off Van Persie or replacing it whichever way that ends up going um, what I will say is that just like the outright winner market it's worth looking at fixtures 
uh, to try and predict how this market's going to unfold. Is it going to be a bigger price down the, the line? And Arsenal have got a tough start. They start at home to Sunderland, uh, which is, uh, that's an okay fixture. But further down the line, um, where are they going? They're going to Stoke, they're going to Liverpool, they've got Man City and, and also Chelsea at home in the, in the first six games. And you could see them not picking up maximum points from a lot of those games, being a little bit off the pace, and that price drifting out maybe even as much as to even money. And that's the time to jump on for me, because they will then come back stronger. Those new players will bed in, start to improve as the season goes on, and that's where you can pick up your value, in my opinion. Sure.